Welcome to Backwoods Pursuit. I'm Gabe Garish, and today we're going to take a look at image stabilized binoculars. We have the Sig Zulu 6 HDX and the Kite APC, both of course image stabilized, and we have them in a bunch of different configurations. There are some very distinct differences that we came away with after using them in the field over the last year, putting them side by side. So, wanted to bring those to you to help you decide what's going to work best for your specific application because like I said, there are very distinct differences between these that you need to be aware of. I'll put links to all these down in the description for you if you wanna check them out for yourself, as well as a link to our website and uh, social media channels. Go check those out, subscribe over there, and hit that subscribe and like on this video. Let's dive into this review. All right, to get started, let's take a look at some of the differences between each of the brands within the same model here. So first, let's take a look at the 10 by 30. We've got the SIG and the Kite here. As you can see, you've got a difference in their form factor. The SIGs being a fairly smaller overall in their form factor and also a little bit lighter. You've got 19.2 ounces with the SIG and 21.7 ounces with the Kite. Now, not a big difference, but certainly something to take note of. Now also to take note of uh, the Kite APC come in a 12 by 30 as well as a 10 by 30, uh, something that the SIG does not offer. So it's kind of unique that 12 by 30, actually found that to be pretty useful as a configuration if you want a little bit more magnification but don't necessarily need that low light performance because of that smaller exit pupil that that 12 by 30 configuration is gonna give you. So something to take note of there. Now moving to the 12 by 42 configuration. Again, there are the two side by side. You can see that the SIG again has a smaller form factor overall, but the height is about the same. Uh, weight wise, the SIG come in at 21.5 ounces and the Kite come in at 25.4 ounces. So again, a little bit lighter weight with the SIG versus the Kite. And on the 16 by 42, similarly, uh, same overall the same body as the 12 by 42 a little bit lighter with the the sig versus the kite uh, and it's similar uh, weights here at 21.9 ounces for the sig and then at 25.9 ounces on the kite for the 16 by 42. now one thing to really take note of uh, with all of these across all of the configurations is that, that smaller form factor that the sig gives you is nice as far as the way that it, it feels in your hands and whatnot, it is nice to have that smaller overall form factor for putting in your binocular harness and such. However, I found that the kite was much more comfortable to hold and to use. Even though it is a little bit bigger, it promotes a better uh, position for your hands. It's just more comfortable overall. And that focus wheel uh, found itself in a more comfortable position than I thought uh, the, the SIG offered. It's, it's just a little bit more awkward with the battery bulge on the back here and really, really narrow if you have long fingers like I do, that uh, the position of, of where that focus wheel was and that battery underneath, it kind of took a little bit of finagling. You kind of get used to it and it's no big deal, but just something I did find that overall, the kite as a whole were much more comfortable to hold, just your hands fall into place a lot easier in that regard. So something to take note of, even though the form factor is bigger on the kite, they were more comfortable to hold on, out in the field when using them. Next, let's take a look at the field of view because there was a difference in the field of view between the various models, some more than others, depending on which model we're looking at, but let's start with the 10 by 30. The SIG here in the 10 by 30 configuration offered the smallest field of view at 274 feet at 1,000 yards. So relatively small field of view, which is something that all stabilized binoculars are plagued with as a whole versus a standard pair of binoculars as far as that smaller field of view. Conversely though, the 10 by 30 in the kite gives you 289 feet at 1,000 yards. So you do have a larger field of view and with image stabilized binoculars, you'll take every little bit that you can get because that is a challenge with image stabilized binoculars. So the kite is definitely a, a large, gives you a larger field of view in that regard. Now, interestingly, the kite in the 12 by 30 gives you the same 274 feet at 1,000 yards as the SIG in the 10 by 30. So you can have a little extra magnification in the SIG 12 by 30 for the same field of view as the SIG 10 by 30. So something really interesting to note there, 
that really kind of appealed to the, the 12 by 30s here. It gives you that little extra magnification that you may want on some, uh, some trips or some hunts or, or bird watching or whatever you're doing with them. Now moving over to the 12 by 42. Again, you've got a little bit larger field of view in the kite. Uh, the specs here show a field of view on the SIG at 200 feet at 1,000 yards and just over that at 202 feet at 1,000 yards on the kite. So a smaller difference between the two there, but the kite does have a slightly larger field of view in the 12 by 42. Now going over to the 16 by 42 configuration. Uh, similarly the, and interestingly, the field of view is the same between the 12 and the 16, so 200 in the SIG here, 200 feet at 1,000 yards, and 202 feet at 1,000 yards on the 16 by 42. That's not typical in binoculars in the sense that in a standard pair of binoculars, if you were to go from a 12 to a 16X, you would have a smaller field of view, but interestingly, that's not the case with image stabilized binoculars. So that's how that plays out in the field of view. Now moving over to the battery and the off and on functionality of each of these. They all use AA batteries except for the SIG Zulu 6 in the 10 by 30 configuration. This one uses the ACR2, uses one CR2. So if you are opting to take this, I would recommend taking an extra CR2 battery just in case. Now it's a common rangefinder battery, so not a bad idea to have maybe one extra anyways for your rangefinder and or this, but definitely keep that in mind. Whereas all the others use a double A battery or two double A batteries. The kite in the 12 and 10 by 30 configuration uses two double A batteries right here and right there. And those compartments are part of what make this a little more comfortable to hold. Again, that 10 and 12 in the 30 millimeter uh, is much more comfortable to hold than the much smaller Zulu 6. Uh, just, just very, very small and it takes a little bit of getting used to to get your hands there uh, in the right position. So those battery compartments affect the hand placement because of where those battery compartments are. So the one difference between the, uh, the kite here is that on the 30 millimeter models, they have one battery here, one AA there and one AA there. Whereas on the larger ones, you have two on each side and one side is used for an extra set of AA batteries. Uh, so that's kind of unique about the kite, the larger kite options. So if we move over to the 12 by, uh, the 12 by 42s, like I mentioned, the, the kite has a, a total of four batteries in here. You don't have to take the extra set, but you do get that extra life and they're just stored right in the, the, the unit itself. So if you wanna do that, you can, or if you're thinking you won't ever need that extra battery or that extra set of batteries, just take them out and leave them. It'll make them a little bit lighter. Now on the SIG side here, you've got one AA just right here on the bottom part and it does kind of protrude out just a little bit. I don't love that about the battery placement. It makes it a little bit awkward as far as again, hand holding the unit. I much prefer the battery placement of the, the kite there versus the SIG, but it does only take one and there's no place for an extra battery. So you have to store that in your pack or whatever, however you want to take that. But I would again, recommend taking an extra battery there. And it's the same exact on the uh, 16 by 42s as the 12. So that's a general rundown of the batteries. Now, as far as the auto power off functionality, that's another area that these are very distinctly different. And so let's go over that difference here. With the SIG, it has an automatic off after 10 minutes. So you flip the unit on, you're using it. Let's say you forget to turn it back off after 10 minutes of use, or if you just forget to turn it off, it's going to automatically turn off. That could be either a good or a bad thing. If you're using them and have been using them for 10 minutes with the stabilization on, it's gonna turn itself off and you have to flip it back on. But if you forget to turn it off, that's a good thing. It's gonna save that battery. Now the kite is different. It has the APC automatic power control. So if you flip this unit on, it's going to stay off until the unit is put in the position like you're using it up to your face here. And so as you're gonna scan and use it, it stays on. And then when you put it back in this vertical position, like it's going in your binocular harness, it automatically turns off. So that is a super useful function that I liked with the kite as well. Uh, that automatic power control is a, a, definitely a battery saver and extends the life of the batteries. Now, in addition to that, the kite will also power off after 90 minutes of being in sleep mode. So additional way to save your battery. So I really did like that. And I thought that the kite was a little bit better in its functionality as far as the auto power off that automatic power control uh, determining or functioning when you have the unit in use or position of use versus the vertical position to automatically turn that off it's worked really well i've used that function for over a year now it's been really really good 
Uh, so I, I really appreciated that in the way that that was designed. Um, obviously with the SIG, that 10 minute auto off is very functional and it works very well. But there are times when I found myself wishing that it wouldn't power itself off or I wish that it would just power itself off if I put it back in my binocular harness so you don't have to manually turn that off every time. So that, that's the differences and that's across the board, across all of the models that have that same functionality with auto off. Now as far as runtime, SIG doesn't really put a determination on their website as far as how long a battery will last. Um, but I do know it lasts a long time and haven't had too many folks, either myself or someone else that has been using these, have any issues with the life of the battery. Um, on the kite side, 36 hours on the, the 30 millimeter models and 60 hours on the, the larger models. And that's because you've got the two sets of double A's. So 30 hours on the one set and you can swap those out and get another 30 hours on the second set. So very good battery life across the board. You're gonna have plenty of use, just carry an extra battery, whether it's inside the unit like the Kite offers or in your pack or whatnot, if you're using the SIGs. Now all of them are IPX7 waterproof rated, so you're good if you do hit a rainstorm. And as far as eye relief goes, the 10 by 30 in the SIG Zulu gives you 15 millimeters of eye relief, whereas the Kite in the 10 by 30 and 12 by 30 give you 17 millimeters of eye relief. So a little bit better eye relief in the Kite in that regard. Now in the 12 by 42, they both give you 17 millimeters of eye relief. And in the 16 by 42, they both give you 14 millimeters of eye relief. So pretty similar, except for in the smaller models here. Now going to optical performance, there wasn't a whole lot of difference between the two and each of the, the configurations when we put them side by side. So 10 by 30 next to each other. 12 by 42 next to each other and 16 by 42 next to each other. There wasn't a massive difference, but there were a couple of small things to note. Resolution was very, very similar. Uh, edge to edge clarity was very, very similar. Uh, so not much difference there to really anything to, to note. Uh, so you're gonna get a very, very similar image in that regard. Now one note that we did find was that the, we found that the SIG have a little bit better color contrast uh, as far as low light. Uh, performance the sig was just a little bit better as well it was very very close found that the sig in all of the the models seemed to be a, have a little bit better resolution but on the other side the, the kite seemed to be a little bit brighter but not quite as good a resolution so very very close though but a couple of distinctions that we made on that same note across the board the kite had a better and larger field of view particularly in the small model that was the biggest difference there um, so the Kite won in that regard. So overall, very similar in their optical performance with those differences we just mentioned. Now we also found that the Kite seemed to offer a slightly more forgiving eye box, not by a lot, but just by a little. And by that, I mean, when you put these up to your face, it, the alignment didn't need to be quite as precise to get a full field of view without those black spots. Whereas the SIG was just a little bit uh, more precise uh, alignment needed to get that full field of view. Again, not a real big difference, but just a slight difference where they found that the kite seemed to be a little bit more forgiving in that regard. Now on the, on the, uh, the focus wheel here, as I mentioned earlier, the location on the kite definitely preferred that. is a little more natural than the SIG, but also found that the SIG was a little bit more precise as the kite felt a little bit on the spongy side. Again, not real bad, but a little bit more spongy than the SIG, and the SIG seemed to be a little more precise is easier to bring that, that image into focus just by a little bit and not quite as spongy filling. Neither of them were amazing as far as the mechanics, uh, but they were, they were definitely functional and did a, did a good job, but just found that, that uh, the kite was a little more spongy and found it a little easier to bring the image into focus and dial it in with the SIG than the kite. Now, as far as image stabilization itself and how it performed, one thing that is very distinctly different about these two is that the SIG offers two image stabilization modes, whereas the kite just has the one. Uh, so the way this works is you have, you flip the image stabilization on, on the SIG or the kite with the lever, and that's gonna flip it into its standard image stabilization mode. And so that's what you're gonna use to scan a hillside, look for an animal or whatnot. But the difference with the SIG here is they also have what they call a target mode. So if let's say you spot a buck or something that is bedded a long ways off, you can turn that unit off and then on again, and it activates their target mode. And what that does is it gives you additional stabilization to really lock in on that target. If you want to say count the number of points or something on a buck, 
So that's gonna give you that extra stabilization. But in target mode, you don't wanna scan. It doesn't do very well scanning. So if you need to go back to scanning, you need to flip that back to off and then on again to put it back into standard mode. So that is something that is super cool about the SIG. If, uh, if that functionality is something that you could use, it is there and it is very nice. Now on that note though, I did find that this scan, the standard mode in the kite here, when using that, it seemed to scan a little bit smoother. So if I'm pulling this up and using it and uh, just scanning through a hillside, it just was a little bit smoother in the standard stabilization mode. So I preferred that in the kite, but I did really like that target mode that SIG offers. So something to take into account there. Now, one thing to note about the, the target mode is that kind of counterintuitive to the purpose of target mode is if you, if you have that flipped on and you're scanning, let's say you find that animal, you have to turn that off and then on without disturbing the binoculars as much as possible. And just by nature, that turning off and then on again is going to potentially move the unit. So you have to be really careful about that because once it's in that target mode, it doesn't scan very well. So you want to try to stay on target best you can when you activate the target mode. So I would like to see a better way to activate that target mode uh, rather than having to potentially move the unit as much as that requires. But it really is an awesome functionality and allows you to, to lock in on a target and count points on a buck or a bull or something of that nature. So really like that about the offering that the SIG gives you. Now, one last difference to talk about here is the warranty. Now, they both have a lifetime warranty on the optics, but as you expect, a lot like rangefinders, the electronics themselves do not have a lifetime warranty. So with Kite, you have a two-year warranty on the electronics and a lifetime on the, the optics. And with the SIG, you have a lifetime on the optics and a five-year on the electronics. So just take note of that difference, given that Electronics are involved in these, as we know, and that's a part of the way that they are built. So uh, the warranty is gonna be different in that regard. So which one is better? It just depends on what you need. There are certainly pros and cons over uh, across the board here, but overall, optically, they're very, very similar, very similar performance. You have different functionalities in that stabilization, having that extra target mode here, more comfortable with the kite, a little more awkward to hold with the SIG, a little bit lighter with the SIG, but you have the extra battery uh, compartments and extra battery storage here in the kite with that extra, uh, that extra comfortable uh, hold, hand holding the form there. So that part is nice. Eye cups are very, very similar uh, between the two. No real differences that, in that way. Overall, excellent, and they are just awesome. Uh, image stabilized binoculars are certainly something that is up and coming. They have their uses, absolutely. Go check our, out our other video on all of the pros and cons of image stabilized binoculars as a whole versus your stabilized or non-stabilized binoculars, I should say. Lots of good information over there. But I'd love to hear your thoughts, your opinions on these. Are they something you would use? Uh, what are your thoughts on the SIG versus the Kite APC? What functionalities are you gonna find most useful if you're looking at image stabilized binoculars? Again, I'll put all of these, a link to all of these down in the description so you can check them out for yourself. Drop any questions or comments. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.